Hi everyone, it's Fitz with your daily delivery. Hope you're doing well. I am fantastic. As you watch this, I might be on my way to Kansas City. Basketball, Thursday night, T-Mobile Center, Cats and Shockers. The staff will be there, including myself. Also, we are coming off recruiting signing day. I hope you were able to watch the live at GoPowerCat we had about K-State's 15-man signing class. It's available right here on this GoPowerCat channel on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribing to it. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up and leaving those comments on with the DD. A little angle about this recruiting class that I find interesting. First of all, there's only 15 guys in the class. It's a small class, but it's not because they didn't find enough players. It's just because they're being really careful with their scholarship count. As we get to the end of this um, COVID season, uh, that bonus season that the players that were around in 2000 had available to them, um, it, it creates an unknown for coaches. How many of those players are actually graduating and moving on and how many want to come back and play? So that, that's one issue. And of course, you've got the transfer portal now available. So there's no reason to kind of reach out and sign some guys just to fill the class. There's other ways to fill your roster. So I think the coaches were a little bit cautious They've left some room for some more guys. And of course, there's a late signing period also. K-State's class, because of the small numbers in it, won't be ranked very high. But if you're familiar with K-State football, who the hell cares? They've never been ranked high. What they do is develop players and put a good product on the field that wins a lot of football games. Recruiting rankings have never really meant a damn thing to K-State football. They overachieve with every class. And maybe that's a, the fault of the recruiting rankings, how they evaluate players, but I don't think so. I think they're taking a snapshot of what those players are like right now, right at this moment. You're a five-star. You can walk in and, and play Division I football. And you're a three-star. You're just not as developed. But as we've seen with K-State, Deuce Vaughn, Felix Sandy, Diki Uzama, those three stars can become first-round or later-round draft picks just really impactful players. And they feel like they have some in this class. But there's another reason this class isn't so sexy. Out of 15 players, four of them are high school offensive linemen. Anytime you're signing 25% of your class, or more in this case, of offensive linemen, people are like, ah, okay. But K-State put a huge emphasis on finding tackles, finding length on the outside that can really develop into true tackles. Now, they've gone through a number of guys that are better suited as interior players. You can go back to Cody Whitehair playing tackle when in the NFL he's a center. Cooper Beebe had to play some tackle. He's a guard in the NFL, if not a center. So they wanted to find some more guys that fit that profile. And at six foot four and 290 pounds, Kyle Rakers out of Iowa is the smallest of these offensive linemen. Of course, going with him is Ryan Howard, younger brother of Will, 6'7", 315, and the two Kansas kids that are four-star players Gus Hawkins and Caden Massey, both really good players. A lot of beef, not a lot of guys, but it'll do. It's a good recruiting class.